The focus of this video is to visit polygons and determine how we can find their areas. Now, there should be some area formulas that you're familiar with from middle school that deal with both perimeter and area. So let's take a few minutes to uh, re-familiarize yourself with these and make sure that you feel comfortable using these old familiar friends. Remember that perimeter is really the distance around the outside of a figure. So really for any figure, for any polygon, I can find this perimeter by adding the lengths of each of its sides. So I'm going to say for all of these, or at least for any polygon, the perimeter can always be found by adding the length of each side. So for the square, we're going to add all the sides. For the rectangle, we're going to find perimeter by adding the length of all its sides. For the parallelogram and the triangle, find perimeter by adding the length of all of its sides. And then lastly, for the trapezoid, it too will find perimeter by adding the length of all of its sides. The circle is an interesting and unique character because it doesn't have sides. And remember, the fancy name that we have for the perimeter of a circle is really circumference. And we find circumference of a circle by multiplying pi times diameter. This should be a formula you're familiar with and comfortable from, with from middle school. The way I remember this formula is that cherry pie is delicious. So circumference equals pi times diameter. But if you have another mnemonic for memorizing that formula, by all means, feel free to use it. But you do need to have that formula memorized. Um, in thinking about area, to find the area of really a square, a rectangle, a parallelogram, area is always going to be equal to base times the height. And remember that in order to be base and height, they need to form a right angle. If your base and height don't form a right angle, you don't have the base and height. So for the square, all the sides measure the same. The area would be equal to s times s or s squared. For the rectangle, again, the area is going to be equal to the base times the height. Well, in the area, or in the case of the rectangle, your base and your height are your length times width. So sometimes you'll see this as area equals length times width. For the parallelogram, once again, area is equal to base times height. So hopefully you're starting to see a pattern develop here, which will make this a little bit easier to deal with. Triangle is going to be a little twist on this pattern, but it's really not so far outside of the whole base times height idea. In the case of the triangle, we're really looking at half of a rectangle. So sometimes people will say the area is one half times base times height. Sometimes people will say it's base times height divided by two. But again, it's really just a variation on this old familiar area equals base times height. The trapezoid is a little bit different, but it too is really just a variation on the same old area equals base times height. In the case of the trapezoid, we have two different bases. So what we're going to do is we're going to take an average of those two bases. So I would say the first base plus the second base divided by two. So again, this is just an average of the two bases. And then we're going to multiply that times the height. So if you want to think of the trapezoid as being an average of the bases times the height, you can think, certainly think about that formula that way. But again, it's just a variation on the base times height formula that we use for the parallelogram and the square and the rectangle. And then for the circle, area equals pi times r squared. And the way that I remember that is that fuzzy wuzzy was a bear area is pi r squared. And again, it really doesn't matter how you remember it as long as you know that area is equal to pi times r squared. Now the circle, because he introduces us to pi, brings some unique considerations. And unless they tell us otherwise, all of our answers for the circle are going to be written in terms of pi. So I'm going to say, unless directed otherwise,
we're going to leave our answers in either in terms of pi or in the case of radicals, simplest radical form. Of course, if they direct us to round to the nearest tenth or the nearest hundredth or the nearest whatever, then we're going to follow directions and do that. But if they don't give us directions, always leave your answers in terms of pi or in simplest radical form. All right, so these are our old familiar friends from middle school. What happens if we're given a figure on the next page that doesn't fall into one of these categories? Well, we know for sure that this figure is a quadrilateral. We wouldn't say that he's a triangle or a rectangle or a parallelogram or any of those familiar shapes that we looked at on page 10. So what I'm going to do for this fella is I'm going to divide him up in such a way that I can find him by using those shapes that we do know on the preceding page. So for instance, I'm going to enclose this quadrilateral inside a rectangle. And if I could find the area of that blue rectangle and subtract out the area of that yellow triangle and the area of that yellow triangle and the area of that yellow triangle and the area of that yellow triangle, I would be left with remaining the area of the quadrilateral. So that's going to be my mission. Now as I do this, I have to be very descriptive about exactly what I'm doing and explain in my work what's going on. So I'm going to explain to the reader that in the beginning, I'm going to start by finding the area of the rectangle. The formula that I'm going to use to find the area of the rectangle is area equals base times height. I'm then going to use the picture to count the number of squares in my base and my height. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab my calculator and multiply my base times my height. And I find that the area of that rectangle is 182 square units. And then I'm going to label these triangles in my picture. I can label them A, B, C, D. I can label them with Roman numerals. You can label them however you'd like. I'm going to label them with Roman numerals. Once again, I'm going to specify to the person reading my paper that I'm now going to find the area of tr my triangles. The formula that I'm going to use to find the area of the triangles is 1 half times base times height. And I'm going to go ahead and start out by finding the area of triangle that I uh, numbered Roman numeral number 1. So his base and height are 4 and 9. And his area, when I plug those numbers into my calculator, I'm going to substitute in 1 half times 9 times 4. I find that the area of triangle number 1 is equal to 18 square units. And then I'm going to go on and I'm going to do the same thing for each of those four triangles. And again, labeling and being descriptive on my paper and describing to the reader exactly which area I'm finding. So this area is going to be 6 times 10 divided by 2, or 1 half times 6 times 10, or 30 square units. Using the same method now, I'm going to go ahead and find area number 3. So I'm going to go over to the picture and find the base and height. So that has an area of 16 square units. And lastly, the area of the fourth triangle
That triangle has an area then of 1 half times 7 times 6, or 21 square units. So once I've finished finding the areas of all of those figures, I'm going to go ahead and find the area of my quadrilateral. And again, I'm identifying that on my paper. Its area is going to be equal to the 182 square units that are in the rectangle. Subtract the areas that are in each of the triangles. So if I grab my calculator and go ahead and perform those computations, I end up with 97 square units for the area of our quadrilateral. So while this is a time-consuming process and it's a lot of work, it's not necessarily hard work. It's finding areas of squares and rectangles and triangles things that you've been doing since middle school. All right, I want you to go ahead and summarize the key ideas and important understandings up at the top of the next page, and then see if you can apply what you've learned in this video in order to find the area of that quadrilateral that's been given to you in example two.